So, good morning, almost lunch. Uh, I am Ana, and this is Mateus. We uh, are from Brazil, so that's why even though we understand German, it's a little bit hard still to do the presentation in German, and we apologize for that. We are PhD candidates uh, in, at Würzburg University, and we work in the DFG Forschungsgruppe. So this is a part of our uh, the concepts that are mutual to our researchers. So, today uh, we are intending to do a quick presentation about theoretic points and then we are going to have a group dynamic. So, we are really looking forward to uh, listen your insights about local self-organization in context of weak statehood. So, I don't know if you could have access to it, but we had some recommended literature uh, on the website of the Congress. So, it would be nice if you have read it, but if you didn't, don't worry, we are going to go through the main points of it. So, communitarianism. Where did communitarianism was born? So firstly, in the 1841, uh, uh, John Godwin uh, talked about communitarianism, but in general, it is all uh, true religious experiences of humankind. So you can see in the Bible, you can see this island, you can see Jewish people, you can see Hindi people. They are all talking about common good. So what we see about common good is something that would be not for my well-being, for mine as individual interests, but I think about the society in general. I think what would be the greater good. In the, uh, and then after a long time ago, after a long time no see, we are going to have in the 80s, mainly uh, Michael Sandel, uh, as a critic towards uh, liberalism. So hard liberalism is not good. Uh, uh, when human beings are just going through individualism, you're going to what's best for me. You leave society and, of course, things of classes. So lower castes are going to be not as good as the upper class because we don't think about the general common good. So here, communitarianism uh, comes up with this, this statement. Okay, we have to think about a common good. And here, it is very important to say that uh, communitarianism cannot be neutral. Why? Because communitarianism presumes that we have a common good. And what is a common good? So we have to set what is good and what is bad. So we are thinking, we have positions, we have statements. The community must to decide what is good and what is bad. So here, we have to understand also that the state itself uh, in a communitarianism or a liberal or whatever kind of government arrangement, it's not neutral. You decide what is good, what is bad. Then uh, in the 90s, uh, after a huge, huge, huge phase of economical liberalism, we have the end of the Thatcher and uh, Reagan era. So with economic, high economical liberalism, we have the homo economicals. So we are going through radical individualism. So again, we are going to have the rise of the welfare state. And again, Etzioni, uh, it's an American sociologist, comes with the idea of the communitarianism. And again, communitarianism was born not as such an academical approach, but more as an ideological speech. So here, Etzioni in 1993 uh, advocates about the middle ground. Okay, guys, we don't need to go that far to radical individualism, but we need to think about the other people. But here, it is the, the point that we have to be aware that when you talk about common good, it's very common to find it in uh, very authoritarian structures, air, for example, of faces or the case system. So again, Etzioni advocates for a middle ground between uh, rights, autonomy, and the common good. Uh, once, however, you put the communitarianism, it seems to be, at least for me, when I started to study this topic, oh, it's so nice, you're talking about common good here, we should think about everybody, and everybody should be concerned. Then we start to think a little bit. Mm, okay, let's put them in the hot seat. So Elizabeth Fraser, in the end of the 90s, she says, okay, 
common good, communitarianism, it's still a very vague concept. We lack of clarity. What is common good? Right, so common good, if you think about faces, uh, and even the Nazi government, they were going to, towards a common good that they decided it was for them. And the case system also, in general, about all the gods and everything, it is for the common good of that society. Uh, so it would be a very endangered situation of to put muffing uh, individual rights in favor of this common good. And what is the response from the communitarians towards these critics? They say, no, come on. Okay, we worry about the common good. We really think that individual wishes should be at least a little bit, little bit uh, balanced. But so we now we offer a liberal or uh, responsive communitarianism. So of course we think about the common good, but the common good should be limited by concepts as, for example, human rights. And uh, we have another very interesting. Uh, point is that libertarians say that the common good does not make sense. Uh, it's like common good, okay, then you should think about a metaphysical entity that would be society that comes the benefits from it. So how do we deal with that? Does that even exist? And there's a very uh, nice uh, quote about uh, from Margaret Thatcher that she says, who is society in the end? There is no such thing. There are individual men and women and there are families. So the common good here for the libertarians would only be possible as a sum up of a lot of individual, uh, personal and individual goods. And again, the response of the communitarians. Communitarians say that uh, people do not do good because they think, oh, it's going to that person or to that group. They do good because of the purpose of good itself. So here, uh, the beneficiary of the good could be a f future generations in things about environmental and climate change, for example, or that if I do good for someone today, maybe someone in this community will do good for me another day. Uh, so good would have a value itself. So, the Homo economicus, uh, social animals, actually, uh, regarding to Aristotle that communitarians advocates to. So we would be individuals that have free choice, but our free choices are limited by the bonds that we have with other people. Therefore, it would be easier to have a soft order what it is. When I, we are in our uh, primary socialization process, I learn what my community thinks it's better. I learn what it thinks that is the common values and uh, the sets of uh, behavior. And somehow I integrate, integrate it to my well-being. So that would be easier for people to work as groups instead of individuals. So the balance saga of communitarianism is exactly to do something, the responsive communitarianism, to balance autonomy and rights and the common good. And communitarians are very straight to the point that they are not a relativist theory because they, ha they want to be some above and beyond consensus of what's common good. So here, human rights are very important and also democracy, for example. So that's what they advocate to. Okay. Uh, apart from the communitarian uh, concepts, we also going work with limited statehood. Uh, we work with, we are developing this concept as well. We know that there is a big literature, and here I uh, quoted one uh, uh, good literature, Alejandro Aguera and Thomas Rice, uh, they have this SFB Berlin 700, uh, also from the FG project. And uh, uh, I will continue with this topic of limited statehood, uh, because it's also a part of our PhD project. Uh, we are going to, to research how community works on limited areas uh, of governance. Um, so first thing we have to, to, to understand is why research governance in area of limited statehood? What, are, what is areas of limited statehood? And clear examples of what is it? And how in, in wonder conditions we uh, see governance in limited statehood? 
in areas of limited statehood. Uh, first thing is important to know that the majority of literature is uh, about uh, is consolidated in areas of consolidated statehood. Now, areas of limited statehood is not clear uh, discussed uh, on this literature. Um, uh, what we have to know is that uh, areas of limited statehood is not areas that are completely not ungoverned or ungoverned spaces. Um, it's areas that central authorities or governance has lack uh, in abilities to implement some decisions and rules or uh, problems to legitimate monopoly over the force or violence. And it's important to know that we are working with the Weberian concept of state and statehood. Um, and uh, where does it happen? So we come from this point that uh, most of the international states has areas of limited statehood um, in one part of the territory or one part of the policies. And uh, it's also important to know that uh, uh, the state does not simply disappear in areas of limited statehood, but has lost the ability to implement and enforce decisions. Uh, now it's going to be clear what is our project about. We are still in the beginning. We started at the beginning of April, and we are going to our field research next week. Uh, we are going to go back to Brazil to make our field research, uh, also with other uh, students from the project, uh, to see these examples of limited statehood, or, uh, communitarianism, uh, and how people work together to achieve their objectives. Uh, we have uh, two ethnolo ethnologists on our group. They are, they are going to make the field research in Burkina Faso, and they are researching about different types of vigilance or policies in Burkina Faso. As we know, Burkina Faso is a country uh, in Africa that faced different pro problems in the last years, especially uh, on the um, civil society organization, also terrorism problems. Uh, and people created ways to uh, control violence because the state uh, forms didn't help the population, so where people were working together. So there will be two cases uh, anal uh, analyzing on this point. Uh, second is uh, uh, two geographers from our group uh, going to Mozambique to make also a field research, researching about self-organization and land water resources uh, in the urban periphery of Maputo, Mozambique. Uh, another student for project uh, we researched the re renewable energy in China. It's also a revolution all over the world. And our cases, uh, me and Anna, we study microcredit and communitarian universities in Brazil. So what, how people organize themselves when the state does not give conditions to it. And especially in our case, uh, we uh, study uh, one special area in Brazil is the south of Brazil that is characterized by um, migrant um, uh, history. So in the late 80s, uh, 800, in the beginning of 1900, a lot of uh, population from Germany, Italian, and Europe in general went to Brazil. In one place, there was no infrastructure at all, and they created ways to um, organize themselves there. Uh, so it's important to work. This is one, uh, one theor theoretical problem of our research, to know that uh, uh, limited statehood uh, exists, but the governance, is, the governance is still exists on these areas. Doesn't mean that in Burkina Faso or in Brazil or in Mozambique, they don't have uh, one state that give people conditions. But no, it's the opposite. It's uh, how, when there is no uh, organization from the state, people uh, meet together to achieve objectives. And then we come to one other concept of our research as self-regulation and self-organization. And to, 
to just make it easier here, um, I put here one example of one weekly cleaning schedule of one student in one heim, uh, one veggie. Self-regulation sometimes uh, uh, is a set of regulations that are formally and constituted internally. So when people you meet, to, uh, meet together and they create rules for, uh, um, for one plan, so in the case, the house cleaning, uh, they create rules, they will create one plan schedule, as you see, uh, and things are going to happen from that. And self-organization is something uh, that comes spontaneous, arise from one cause, for example. So it's more or less this uh, uh, differentiate, uh, differentiation we can do. Uh, and then we enter in some uh, points also that we are facing on the, the, uh, our project. And uh, Professor Laut is our betrayer. Uh, he works with formal and informal institutions that we are going to see and analyze on the research room. Here I, I put two photos. This, the first one is the US uh, Senate. Uh, the second one is in Rio de Janeiro, it's one favela. For, uh, it's the biggest favela, slums, and, uh, over the world. Uh, it's in Rio de Janeiro. And uh, what it has to be clear for us that a uh, formal and informal institution happens in any kind of organization. So it's, we cannot only say that formal, formality is on Congress and informality is on slums. Okay. And this build, uh, uh, also give us one clear information what we are going to see and we, how can we differentiate both of things. Um, formal institutions normally are formally codified, informal institutions no. They, they have, uh, formal institutions, they have uh, writing documents, informal institutions normally no. Uh, I will talk about formal institutions. They suffer uh, states and sections Legitimation is presented for sovereign, sovereignty of people and uh, state authority. Uh, and uh, timing of change, it's normally short and informal institutions are quite difficult to change. Uh, and coding center, yes, and informal institutions, no, and normally seldom. Uh, I know there is a lot of concepts from the beginning. It's what we are going to develop, so we are going to the field research and make some uh, uh, empirical and collect data, interviews, the interviewing this organization, in my case, the credit institutions, how uh, credit institutions organize themselves. Uh, yeah, how, how can uh, people meet and organize themselves apart from this state. And for that, to so, finish. Uh, yeah. That's all. In general, long story short, what we are going to do, we are looking for, okay, where is our limited or weak areas of statehood? So the state does not give everything that society and groups need to live. And now self-organization and self-regulation. How do people do that? How do people live? Because people, in the end, have to live, have to go to school, have to go to the hospital, have to have some kind of uh, decision-making process. And that's why we want to do it to you right now. How would you deal in a situation like that? So here, even though we know that is uh, no planet B, we are trying to offer an opportunity here of a planet B. So it would be already to, uh, 20 and 90, and scientists had finally discovered uh, another planet where human beings can totally live. So here we have all the conditions of uh, environment and everything. And you are the lucky chosen ones. Government had not only given you the tickets to go there back and forth, so you're not in prison there, that's important, but you are also uh, entitled often a considerable amount of land where you can just build everything you wanted there. And you have to build and develop everything you and your community may need to have a dignified life. 
What are your restrictions there? You have to respect human rights based law framework. Yeah. So you're talking about uh, Eastern world, West world where we can, you know, at least try to respect human rights. And then your concerns are restricted also to your community needs and desires. Considering that we were expecting Expecting less people, you can do that from your place individually or talking to the partner on your side. And what is your task? You have to choose one of these groups. So you can be scientific researchers, you can be workers, entrepreneurs, church, family, neighborhood, wherever you want to be, and you have to build this community. So what you're going to do there? What do you need? How do you decide things? Uh, what, where do you go? What are the structures you need? And you have 10 minutes to that, and then you're going to talk about it, okay? And uh, later on, we open for the discussion. So, Let's go. We are. We were looking from here. We have kind of five groups. So maybe one at a time you can tell us how is your community. Doesn't matter if you couldn't go through all the points, but the essentials. Thanks. Who wants to start? If you don't say, I will choose. So. <laughs> Choose a different community, not neighborhood. Thing to us, um, 
Have you thought about a um, uh, historical example of the kings in this? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody choose the uh, scientific community? Or entrepreneurs? Yeah. Or other group of workers? <laughs> So the main point with this exercise would be, uh, because sometimes we are going to, political scientists, I feel like this, I don't know if you can relate, is that we are talking, talking about concepts, 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 and it's hard to bring it to um, the real life. In Brazil, in the end of the 1800s, that was exactly what happened with uh, German and Italian immigrants there. The Italians and Germans just migrated there, and Brazilian states just said, okay, here's a piece of land, you can do whatever you want. There were no schools, there were no hospitals, no um, municipality organized, and they basically had to create it from the ground. And here's something very interesting when we could see like a neighborhood or the workers, because the interests and the main points are very different. So here we are talking lots about decision making, and there we were talking lots about how to get things done. So it's very interesting, uh, which point of view, who is speaking to, which your, is your place of speech, where are you talking from? It's very interesting. And in the communitarian uh, paradigm, it's the challenge, the big, biggest challenge as a theoretical school is that how to bring a common good uh, closer to the notion of, lib of liberal and individual choices and human rights, for example. Yeah, something interesting uh, also in our case is uh, this immigrant uh, group that went on the late 1800. They went and was something that we can call one uh, becoming uh, one Brazilian state, but there was already some authorities working there. But the authorities, they were not given what was necessary to live. So as Anna said, no schools, so people created uh, communitarian schools. Uh, also in, in the culture, there is, if even today, I'm, I'm coming from Central Brazil, Minas Gerais, it's a state close to Sao Paulo. I went the first time there in the south uh, some months ago, and I could even see people still speak German in some communities. Lots of like friends about my age, I'm 26, that first learned German instead of Portuguese, and just learned Portuguese when they went to kindergarten. So they are really stable uh, community, really strong, with strong ties of you know, social relationships. And these also, the state authoritarian regimes, uh, for example, Vargas in 1930, forbid people to speak German on schools, or te te teach the, to teach the language on the schools was forbidden, formally forbidden? Basically what happened, they arrived, they didn't have the institutions, so they, okay, let's make schools, let's make hospitals, mainly the Germans did in the south of Brazil. And then, in the 30s, uh, Brazil states decided, no, we need to be a stronger state, we are not a weak state anymore. So what do you do? We take that communities, we take that schools and that hospitals that the community have built, and we just, okay, Okay, you cannot speak German or Italian anymore, you are in Brazil and should speak Portuguese. In our research, we are going to research that, uh, how institutions formally constituted by um, community, thing, community people, uh, how they organize themselves and how they relate with state authorities. Yeah. And any similarity with the process that now Brazil is going through with a very, um, let's say, I'm struggling to choose the word, uh, maybe 
difficult president. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's lots to do with this. In this project, I think that the main challenge that they bring to us, like, we need solutions. You should have uh, been looking for solutions. Like, the liberal state does not work anymore. The welfare state needs to be uh, somehow rethinking. And what are we going to do? So that's what we wanted to bring with this uh, practical exercise. To, because somehow we have to bring our knowledge, our academic knowledge. And as Latin Americans, it's very hard in Brazil to get closer society outside of universities and the academic knowledge in general. So thank you. <laughs> Now we can open if someone questions. wants to say Next something. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you very much. It was a very lovely, interesting presentation. Thank you. Um, I, I think it's a very interesting project. Also, we were talking about these immigrants coming to non-urban regions of the country. Mm -hmm. But what I was thinking about is all these immigrants. Let's say we have an Italian family and German family yeah. moving in an open field. Mm -hmm. Are they? Are these families already have an idea of how society works and what needs they have? Won't these people kind of agree, okay, we need to go to school for our children? Why is if I have someone immigrating from somewhere in the rainforest to this open field, probably first of all think, oh, I need to get, I need to get water to my house or something. Like, mm -hmm. Are the needs open enough that we can like, create a new space? Or That's very interesting. Uh, actually, excellent point. Uh, that's something that we see because for when uh, the guys that are going to Mozambique, for example, uh, and there they have, they are lots of ethnics and uh, ethnic groups, and their main need is like water resources. So that's what they did. How? So the state's not bringing clean water. How do we deal with that? We need to do something. Even though the state doesn't allow it, we need to drink water. We need to have you know, sanitation and things like that. But when you saw that German and Italian community went to Brazil, their thoughts were mainly more uh, towards education and uh, health as hospitals and things like that so and also you can you can relate because Brazil uh, in the 800s and some areas were more developed than uh, African structures for example yeah but it's totally like that it depends where you come from where you're going which kind of is even though it, that's what Mateo's point is like limited statehood not it's not a lack of statehood okay it's no one say anything about here it's it's that direction yep um, i was kind of wondering um, as you were first presenting um like the outlines of the um, theoretical concept and you um well started to talk about the problems like um that the concept is um, associated with um a lack of individual rights or freedom um, i was wondering like how how this, or why, how does this connection um, come together? Because for me, like when I was thinking about self-regulation, um, I thought it would be like much more, or there, would, there could be much more space for like, um, yeah, having a space for your individual needs. And um, I was wondering if you have any experience um, with, for example, the communities that you are research about, that you're going to research, mm -hmm. um, what are like the actual problems that they were dealing with? Maybe you'd good, say good that's question, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, As Brazil is a continental country, uh, I was really surprised when I went there the first time in south of Brazil, you see really strong communities build themselves things and it's completely different from the area I'm on. Miscegenation, for example, you can go in the uh, countryside of the south of Brazil, it, the harder it gets to get uh, to see black people, for example. So, uh, in my case, I will study credit cooperativism. That is uh, one uh, way that uh, community grow out of it. Because uh, as we well, we use we export things like uh, agri agriculture things, the money stays with this elite and uh, with the farmers and uh, with uh, one patriarchalist. It's one patriarchalist system, and. Uh, uh, so one, one, one person from one community like that, normally in the past they used to have to travel to one big urban area to study. 
So why not to create uh, one institution that can give people from our locality uh, conditions to learn and to stay there so, so that you still give uh, this place a possibility to grow and to develop. Um, of course, somehow it all seems very uh, beautiful and good on the paper, on the idea. And I totally get to your point. I am struggling. Actually, we are st struggling with it, like ideologically mainly. Because you see, I study a um, communitarian university in South Brazil. And initially, the idea is very good. So, okay, we don't want our children to have to move in order to study. So we built here uh, an university. But then you look that they are uh, mostly a uh, white community, uh, Catholic community and when you go to the university uh, it's hard sometimes to see um, diversity so even though uh, it's a different organization because it's not private it's communitarian so all the profit that they get from tuition fees remember that in Brazil we don't have the same system as you have here we have to pay mostly to go to to college and uh, so you know it, all the profit goes to the institution itself but somehow how that's the point how do you decide who decides who is there so it's very cool it's very cool it's from the community but who is this community is that are the lights or are like representation from workers or something like that it's harsh hmm? Think that there could be a turning point, and which one the uh, uh, the society tries to force to decrease the influence of government. I think yes. Uh, I think uh, if you analyze at least what I have until now from what I'm studying, is uh, when you get uh, the people from uh, the leaders from this community, they are connected with leaders of the state, or if they are both the same person. So yeah, uh, and then there's the, the important thing is to analyze how is the hierarchy inside of the community. So if the decisions are for the community or for their own interests. So this is what we are going to see also. Yeah, and for example, the, the university I study, uh, it was born during the last dictatorship period that we had in Brazil. And it's very funny because they were born exactly in 64, where uh, the military, the army took power. And then when you read about, okay, university, and how was that to, you know, you were born during the dictatorship period? And they said, no, it was quite okay, you know, they were quite supportive, the general guys to us. And you see that's countryside, south of Brazil, you know, so, and they had a good relationship with the dictators, so it's harsh. <laughs> Um, in Brazil, you're so focused on the communities uh, from Europe and migrants. Yes, south. I was thinking about the international in America, Brazil, mm -hmm. um, was also uh, native communities. Uh, or, um, yeah, it was like, I was thinking about the migrants, lots of like, differences question. in values or morals, and yeah. like, how they would approach the Excellent question. building communities differently, like, especially. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, we have really a problem with Native Americans in Brazil because mostly there was a genocide, not, not as clear as the one in North America, but it was progressive, you know, it was uh, more uh, on the backside, so it wasn't okay, it's a bath of blood here. So uh, the few communities that we still have, they are inside of the forest, so and they have their own thing there, but the ones that came to, to the city, they are usually very poor and very in a vulnerable conditions so unfortunately you cannot they are just struggling to save their lives so unfortunately we don't get to see this kind of organization and considering that is an European project they are focusing on the European that went to Brazil and they pay our salary so <laughs> no 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 yeah okay thank you so much everyone sorry, sorry. <laughs> Eine Bitte noch an alle, also es ist Mittagessen. Ähm, ihr erhöht eure Chancen, einen Sitz dazu bekommen, wenn ihr einen Stuhl mitnehmt, den ihr jetzt da nicht gebraucht habt. Die sind nämlich oben aus der Kaffee. Das wäre ganz super. <lacht>